This here is the CCS port on my 2021 Kia Soul EV. And um, for a very long time, this was the standard that we're going to have in North America. But recently things have changed. Um, and I think that the product that I'm going to show you guys today, and it's a variation of something that I've already had on the channel before, but that's something that is very relevant and uh, especially given the current climate. Uh, but yeah, this is the CCS port. I've eliminated it a little bit so that it's easier to see. And like I say, for a very long time, it has been the standard. Let's go back in time to November 11, 2022, when Tesla announced that they're gonna release their connected design to the world and encourage any automaker that wishes to adopt their standard. Um, so they don't call it actually the Tesla plug, but they just call it the NACS, which stands for the North American Charging Standard, which is pretty cool. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, they just let it out there, um, in November, uh, of 2022 and for many months, radio silence, um, only small startups like Aptera decided, Hey, we're going to be started to, to implement that charging standard within our vehicles. But then about two weeks ago, Ford came out and said, Hey, we're going to be start using the NACS across the board, across all our future vehicles. And that shook the industry. Then, a couple of days ago, General Motors did the same. So what is the future of CCS? We don't know right now. Um, you know, there are still a lot of CCS capable cars out there. I'm sure that the networks will support our charging. But I think it's also time to start thinking about the future. And are we going to be able to charge our cars in as many locations as we can now? So obviously, the most important thing is to start thinking about adapters. So this is what I have today. This is a Tesla or NACS to J1772 adapter. It doesn't work on the supercharger, but it works on any other Tesla charger that you can find, even chargers at hotels, destination chargers and all that stuff. If you wanna see uh, more details about this, I have a link in the description. So go ahead and click that, find out more. But if you want to see what's included in the box, let's go. Let's unbox it. Let's test it out and see how well it works and see if it's as good as the other ones that I have tested on the channel already. This is the Tesla 2J177 connector manufactured by a company called DEDC. Then they have been doing this since 2013. So let's see what comes in the box. So the box itself, pretty standard. You got your cardboard. Um, inside there, first one, what you see is an instruction manual. So it says it's a Tesla 2J1772. The charging adapter has a max amperage of 48 amps. So if you have a car that is able to handle such a charging rate, you're going to get pretty good speeds, right? So it says here, max 250 volts AC charging, and you can use it at uh, the high power wall connector, destination charger, as well as the mobile connector. So there you go. Pretty simple little instruction booklet. Inside here, it also tells you all the cars that uh, you can use with it. But you know, if it has a J1772 connector, you can use it pretty much with any car that has that. Okay, so. That's a little instruction manual. Then we have some protective foam. Let's put it to the side. Let's see what this is. All right, so this is your wall mount. So if you would like to mount it on a wall, let's say you have a Tesla uh, connector at home, but you also have a CCS capable car. So then you can just put this mounted on the wall and then uh, you know keep your uh, adapter in the, this holder if you're not using it. So pretty good addition. And then, in more foam, and covered by more plastic, we have the adapter itself. So, there you go. That's what it looks like. So we have the DEDC logo at the front. We have a little locking mechanism here. So let's look at the J1772 side. So yeah, we can see that in the... Uh, darkness there a little bit of red so that's a grommet that's so that helps with weather sealing so you don't need to worry about um, charging your car when it's wet or rainy outside the rain should not get in through there and then of course this is a Tesla side so again it is a weather sealed and then 
there is another lock here on the very bottom of the unit. So if you plug in your Tesla side, you can just slide it up like that and it's uh, open and then that's locked. Open and locked, pretty simple. Um, there is no locking mechanism built into the adapter here. So you're gonna have to rely on the car's locking mechanism when you are charging so that nobody steals it. So if you have that functionality, and most cars do, make sure it is turned on. And it is made out of plastic, so no metal anywhere, but it feels really, really sturdy, I have to say. It feels really sturdy, really well made, but it is slightly bigger than the other one that we had a look at. But still, you know, it's all about how it performs, right? So let's go plug it in to a Tesla wall connector and see how it works. So this is our test environment. So we have our Tesla home charger. This is the high power powered version um, right here on the wall. So as you guys can see, it's not the J1772 version. It is indeed the Tesla connector. So then here we have the Kia, obviously is a, not a native, uh, Tesla connected car. Okay, so we have here the CCS port. Apologies for the car, it's super dirty. I was on a road trip and didn't have time to clean it up. But here, uh, I eliminated it for you guys so you can see better. That's the CCS port, okay? And then here we have our adapter in question. All right, DDC, very nice. And then I also have um the obd plugged in so right now the car is on it's sitting idle and it's pulling how much uh 0.29 kilowatt all right so that is uh that is how much energy it is pulling right now so not much so first we're gonna plug and see um how much it will pull while being turned on and then we'll turn it off and see what the difference is. Okay, so put that away. So first of all, we need to connect, well, the Tesla connector to the Tesla side and let's see how easy that is. So I just grabbed the Tesla connector off the wall holder there. And then here we have the DEDC Tesla to J177's adapter. So let's see if these things will fit. Ooh, perfect. Love it. And remember guys, the lock, right? Let's see if it works. So this is the lock position. Yeah, it works. Can I? Ah, no, I can't. And what's great about this lock is that it's underneath this whole setup. So you actually don't see it if you're a passerby so that other people who are also passing by won't see that it's locked. They will just try pulling and won't be able to unlock. Okay, now let's go and plug it in. Okay, here we have the whole setup with the adapter. So now let's go over here and try to plug it in. So it goes on the top part here because that's your DC fast charging ports. And then this is your J1772 connection. So, oh, I love that satisfying click. Very nice. Okay, now, the charger is talking with the car and we're waiting for green. We're waiting for green. Let's see if it happens. Um, lock in place. So that's perfect. Look at that. And we are charging. Did the car say we're charging? You see the blue light? Yes, we are charging. All very nicely connected, all working well. So now, what is the speed that we are getting? Let's have a look. So, right now we're getting about six kilowatt. Now the car is turned on, but the HVAC is off. So let's see if we turn off the car, what kind of speeds we get. With the car off, we're getting about 6.1. So we're getting slightly more than we did with the car on, which is, you know, it's obvious, right? All the systems have been turned off, so we're getting the maximum speeds that we can get from this adapter. So yeah, very happy with the charging speed. As advertised, my car cannot handle more than this anyways. And we're looking at about 16 amps over there. So yeah, not bad, not bad, not bad.
at all. So yeah, very happy with the speeds um, in line with the other adapters that I've tested. So is this adapter a viable option? I think so. Um, it works as advertised. Uh, many of these things do. Um, they're quite well made, especially this one. I Even though it's all plastic, I would say that the build quality is, is really, really good. Um, I have no problems with the build quality on this thing, definitely. Um, it works as intended. Like I said, my Kia can only do 7.4, where we're getting um, 6.3, I believe. So that's, you know, more than enough. Um, it has a good locking mechanism if, you can, if your car handles that. It has the locking mechanism here for the Tesla side as well. And it's compact enough to carry you with you. So now, um, obviously, a few gripes. Uh, the first one, um, it would be nice if they included some sort of, uh, 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 you know, a case for this um, so that you can store it in the back of your car, in the trunk or whatever, and not worry about damage because you, we do have pins on both sides, so it would be nice. Obviously, you can still use that included uh, cardboard box, but it would just be nicer to have some sort of dedicated pouch for it. Um, anything else? No, that's it. It's a pretty simple thing and I like it. It does its job and when again with the current climate and the North American charging standard becoming a standard now, I think that a lot of us well, at that time we will be legacy <laughs> legacy EV owners we will need a lot of these kind of adapters um, to be able to charge on this new charging future that we have here in North America okay uh, if you want to pick one up link is in the description and uh, yeah it's a good option all right guys thanks so much for watching uh, if you like the video please make sure to like it subscribe if you haven't already and i will catch you on the next one all right take care bye